Okay, so this video is just going to be talking about the book that we got donated from a student that went to Barcelona over their Thanksgiving break, okay? So we're just going to go over some parts about the book that I really like so you guys can see inside too because I know it would be very interesting for everyone to see, okay? So this is the front cover. It's very beautiful, as you can tell. This is a mosaic right here. And these are different greens and different blues, and it's kind of like a blue-green. This is the English version, and these are the authors, okay? The back cover has many different examples of his work. Beautiful. Very nice. And as you can see, right here it says that it was made in Barcelona. These are many different locations that this book features. Now, we're going to go inside. The inside cover has a map. So this map is, I believe, what our friends saw when they went to Barcelona. Okay? There's different monuments here. Very many monuments. There's 16 monuments here that are worth seeing that he built. Very, very cool. And then here it has more stuff. Now, works in the front of the book. Now, we're going to look at some pages. Alright, now there's some parts in here that I want to see, because this is the, uh, like, um, table of contents. So the first thing I want to see is his early works, which is page 31. Okay. So his early works were from 1878 to 1892. There he is. No, portrait of S. Uesevi Guel I. Basi Gualupi, 1846 to 1918. This is such a big thing to work. This is crazy. This here was in 1878. Casa Vincennes. The Casa Vincennes was the first important work undertaken by Gaudi, situated on Gared Carolines. It was built between 1883 and 1888 at the behest of the ceramic tile manufacturer Manuel Vincenz Montaner. Here is some um, like layout of the ground of Casa Vincenz.
beautiful tile designs. Tile is the things that are used to build like floors and walls and things like that. Wow. We're going to move on to the period of maturity, page 111. All right. So his period of maturity was from 1892 to 1914. I, I do believe that is, yeah. Photograph of Gali for the exhibitor's past of the Universal Exhibition of 1888 in Barcelona. So that is a picture of Gali. This is a watercolor of the project for the Franciscan Catholic Missions of Tanglier produced in 1893, which, although never undertaken, shows similarities to the Temple of the Sagrada Familia. Very interesting. Here we go, mosaic. Mosaic, mosaic, and as you can see, it's tiny broken pieces of glass in different colors. mosaic, but this is like a tile mosaic of all tan pieces, and the sky looks beautiful behind it. Benches made with the mosaic style, beautiful. Guel Bodegas. The Guel Bodegas in Garaf, a coastal town situated between Barcelona and Sitges, were built between 1895 and 1901. Francesc Benguer, assistant to Gali, was more than the collaborator, co author of this building that for some time was even attributed to him completely. Uesevi Guel, owner of vineyards in the county of El Garaf, had these bodegas built to bottle the wine exported to Cuba. Cuba, sorry. Here's more layout. The building itself, like this is the ground floor, this is the first floor, and this is the chapel and viewpoint. And then that was the building all together, like on the outside. And then this is how it actually looked. It was the project was done in 1895, and it finished in 1901. And these are examples of the stuff inside. The exterior of the, exterior of the building is constructed in masonry of gray stone from the Garaf. The same material was used by Gaudi in other buildings in Barcelona. Uesevi Guel stored a, a wine of dubious quality in the Garaf Bodegas, which he exported to Cuba in the boats of the Transatlantic Company. Casa Calvet, Pere Martir Calvet, was the promoter of this property, which was built in the Caril Casp in Barcelona between 1898 and 1900. This time, Gali recreated. Catalan Baroque in this markedly 19th century building. In 1900, the Casa Calvet won the prize which for the first time Barcelona City Council awarded to the best building. The threshold of the door is framed by the letter C and the cypress tree. A symbol of welcome on its upper part and on both sides by two sewing mill looms which refer to the industrial 
activity of, of Galvet. These walls are beautiful. Here's some more floor plans. This is a very complex floor plan. It was done in 1898 and it finished in 1900. These are examples of furniture, textile reels, mushrooms, offices, and Baroque, which is a style. This is the inside of the building. Outside, external pieces. Over the front door, surrounding a cypress, symbol of welcome, appears a C initial of the owners. We already spoke about that. Alright, so now we're going to move on to the final years, page 247. Alright, so his final years were from 1914 to 1926. Okay, this is a picture of him in 1920. This is a roof that's very wavy. I don't know how they did that. That looks very, very interesting. It's a little harder to see the book this way since it's towards the end. I know you guys are having a hard time seeing the text, but at least the images are worth seeing. So, Basilica of the Sagrada Familia. Construction work began on the Sagrada Familia in 1882. Its promoter, Joseph Bacarela, entrusted that the work to the architect Francisco de Paula del Vilar, who in 1883 was replaced by Gaudi. From this moment on, the work on the temple would accompany him for the rest of his life, and he introduced architectural solutions that he had tested and solved in other projects. The temple, that would be called the, the Cathedral of the Poor, had to be financed entirely by donations. The works continue up to this day, following the plans that the architect left behind. So what that means is that I believe it is not finished. I believe this is one of the works that he was unable to finish in his life. If you notice, these are a bunch of, these are not paintings, these are actually carved out of stone or however he made them. So that obviously takes a very long time. Here's floor plans and stuff like that. Again, very complex. And this is obviously very tall. I wish it showed us the height in the charts. So, Bishops, Hosanna Excelis, original sketch. The towel, the X and the dove, nativity, and pelican. Again, very detail oriented. So it makes very much sense that this took such a long time. Six toes. In the sculptural group of the slaughter of the innocents, the foot of the soldier that is about to tear apart a child that has six toes. Interesting. Musician in angels. Six angels, three with classical instruments and three with popular instruments, symbolize the celestial court of the baby Jesus. Birds, it seems if they are coming out of the stone, flying in all directions, and are the symbol of the relationship between heaven and earth, divine messengers against the serpent. Temptation, in the chapel of the rosary, a demonic of beings places an Orsini bomb used in the attack on the Lisieux Theater in 1893 in the hands of a worker. The angel of the final judgment, the figures on the nativity facade were made from mounds of people. In this case, the illustrator Opicio, assistant to Galli. Roman soldiers, with helmets that Im imitate the chimneys of the Pedera, they are homage to Galli by the sculptor Subiax. Carpent carpenter's tools. In the Hope doorway, there are many tools related to the construction trade. The Veronica, the face of Jesus printed on the veil of the Veronica always looks at the spectator through an optical effect produced by the sculptor Subrax. And now we're back to images of it and where it stands. Again, the sky looks beautiful behind the actual work.
in 1899, the chapel in the cloister of the Virgin of the Rosary was completed in which Gaudi worked with extreme exactitude on the details. Detail of the doors of the nativity facade produced by Asuro Soto. In 1911, Gaudi became ill with his Maltese fever, and from his convalescence in Beguerda, he imagined the facade of the Passion. I am prepared to sacrifice the very construction to break vaulting and cut columns to give an idea of how cruel sacrifice is. In 1990, in the atrium of the facade of the Passion, the first sculptors entrusted to Joseph Maria Subrax were positioned. The sky is blue and pink. That is beautiful. This is actually, these are humongous buildings. I need you to remember that. These are not tiny. This is a look up into the, the ceiling of the building itself. And his biography. Okay. Um, in 1852, Antoni Gaudi was born in Rus. 1867, with Edward Tora and Joseph Rivera, he conceives a restoration plan for the monastery of Poblet. In 1869, he moves to Barcelona with his brother Francesc. In 1872, he enrolls at the Higher School of Architecture in Barcelona. In 1876, the deaths of his brother, Francesc, and his mother have a profound effect on the young Gaudi's state of mind, and he seeks refuge in his architectural studies. From this period are preserved projects such as the cemetery gate or the jetty. To pay for his studies, Gaudi worked with two recognized professionals in Barcelona, Francesc de Paula de Vilar and Joseph Fronsted I. Mastere, who he helped in Sutaela Park, he produced, among other pieces, the two naturalist panels at the aquarium entrance, which is behind the monumental waterfall. And there's many other things. Many other things. This is such a good book for detail of his works. In the sad part, the last thing, in 1926, Gaudi dies after being run over by a tram. The streets of Barcelona are filled with people who accompany the funeral procession. The architect was buried in the crypt of the Sagrada Familia. And there he is again, another picture of him, a picture of him. And here are other books about his life. So if you see any of these then they are also related to this. But thank you so much to our student, well, it's actually two brothers, that their mom wanted to donate this to our class. This book is beautiful, and it has inspired the lesson that we have done um, at this moment. So thank you so much, and we appreciate it very much.